Hello and thanks for watching this video. This video is about uh, ClearPass and connecting it to a SQL database. And in this video, um, which is part of a multi-part series, we will be configuring ClearPass to uh, connect to a Postgres database running on Ubuntu Linux. And I had another video already online to uh, how to set up that uh, Postgres database on your own Ubuntu server. If you uh, want to see it, uh, please watch that video first so you can uh, do the same uh, examples as I have here in this demo on your own system. Uh, there will be another video on uh, configuring ClearPass for MySQL and uh, as well uh, on how to set up MySQL on your own database. So in that uh, previous video on uh, setting up Postgres, uh, what we created was a, a database uh, called CP Demo uh, within it two tables. The first of it was a CP user, the second is a CP device, and the CP user has a user uh, with the username test user and uh, a password, the Ruby123. And uh, because at some databases you don't have the plain text password, we stored the database in uh, the database password uh, in uh, MD5 and in uh, SHA and SHA256 as well. So these are some, uh, yeah, many times used ways of storing passwords in the database uh, without storing the password in plain text um, itself. So um, it's considered more secure if you have the SHA-256, you don't have the password and you can't use it anywhere else. Then in the second database, we have the uh, database, uh, we have the, uh, the MAC address here of an uh, access IP camera with some uh, location, labeling, color, status information. So uh, we will be using this uh, table uh, later on as an authorization source in ClearPass. So we can um, yeah, put proper roles and access on this specific uh, user. So let's bring on the ClearPass server. So this is my uh, ClearPass server where I set it up. And uh, in order to make this uh, SQL connection happen, uh, we need to go to the uh, configuration authentication sources. And here in the sources, you see we have the two uh, databases already configured. And let me show you how I configured them. So this is the user database. Let's start with the user database. Um, here in the primary field, we put in the server IP address. So this is my Ubuntu server. This is the database name, CP demo, uh, and we will log in with the username ClearPass and the password uh, Aruba123. We set this up already in the um, in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that video, um, please watch it, um, and um, you will finish up with a configured SQL database. Um, then here we select the database type. So in our case, uh, for this video, it will be Postgres. And uh, this is the password type. So this is um, how the password is stored in the database. And what ClearPass will do is it will get the uh, password from the database. In this case, it will be a SHA-256 uh, hashed password. And uh, when ClearPass receives the password from the user, it will do the same SHA-256. And if those two uh, outcomes matches, then uh, we know we have a successful authentication. So uh, we don't need to have the clear pass, uh, the clear text password in the database. We'll, we'll do that uh, later on. So here on the attributes, this is where the SQL query is uh, done. So uh, we call that filters in uh, ClearPass. And uh, here you can see the uh, SQL, uh, SQL query. So select the CP username as a username, uh, then the CP password, the SHA-256. So that is one of the fields in uh, the database as user password. We select the first name, the last name uh, from the table CP user, and then uh, we do a filter. So we only want to have the rows where the CP username field um, equals um, the authentication username. And you may have seen this uh, percent curly brace open uh, construction uh, more times. Uh, what worked pretty well for me is if you go here to the access tracker and then uh, check um, if you can find a, a field that uh, properly matches uh, the value that you uh, that you want to have. Um, 
So uh, in this case, um, the this is the username in this uh, case. So uh, we can uh, copy here authentication colon username and then uh, paste it here. And you do a, a percent curly brace open. Then you paste what you got from the access tracker curly brace close and um, you're done. And then here uh, we say the fields that we want to have as attributes available in ClearPass. So we pick three um, three fields, the username, the first name, and the last name. And those will be available in your policy so we can uh, see them uh, later on in the access tracker. So this is... Uh, yeah, this is a bit about setting up the uh, the authentication. So, in order to test it, we with this we need a service, and I do have a service here configured uh, test SQL. And in this test SQL, I do a check on the NAS IP address if it equals one two three four. So I can use a policy simulation uh, later on to test the authentication. And for the service, what we did here is that in the authentication sources we put the uh, PSQL user authentication source that we just uh, created here under sources and uh, yeah, that's basically it so uh, we do an uh, allow access policy on the uh, successful authentication so that makes that we now can go to the policy simulation and here uh, in this policy simulation I set up that um, I'm uh, processing a local uh, ClearPass uh, radius request of the type generic and the NAS IP there is one two three four. So that's what I filtered on in the um, in the, in the, in the in the service. Then here we have the username, uh, we have the uh, password, um, and let's first put in some bogus. Password. So um, let's uh, go to the results. So it's running now, and I expect it to fail. And uh, indeed, it says that the uh, authentication has failed. And now we can see the access tracker here. Um, yeah, we do a failed authentication error here under uh, alert. We can see that the uh, SHA-256 password check failed. So. Maybe it's a good idea to push the correct password here, Aruba123. Save. Oh, and then see the results. And now we see that the authentication was successful. And again, we can check the access tracker. Uh, and now we can see the authentication source was my uh, SQL database. Um, and the authorization source was the uh, PSQL user uh, authentication source. And here under the input, if we check the authorization attributes, this is where we can see the attributes that we fetched from the database. So, um, and we can do uh, all kinds of things here. So we can uh, test uh, values or we can uh, use the values to assign roles or stuff like this. Um, and let's uh, show that later on with the device uh, authentication. So let's, now change the uh, authentication method because um, we had multiple authentication methods in our uh, database. So here we can say, for example, let's uh, now do a clear pass, uh, a clear text uh, password. Uh, so we have the clear pass, uh, sorry, the clear text password um, in our uh, database. So yeah, we have it here. So in the previous, we took this hash. So let's now um, try to uh, use the uh, clear text uh, passwords. And then here, um, what we need to change, of course, is here uh, not to take the CP password underscore SHA-256, but just the CP passwords. Um, so let's save. Um, so we change two things. Uh, first of all, um, the user password which is the token which will be used as the uh, user password of course um, is taken now from another column in the database so from the cp password uh, now and the second thing is that here uh, we selected that the password will be fetched as a clear text password um, did i press save um, so and now if you go back to the policy simulation uh, let's run it again and see um, we see immediately that it's successful um, again. So 
Um, and now in the back end, it has been matched to the clear, pass, uh, clear text password um, on the database. So now we have user authentication working. Uh, the next step will be that we are doing device, um, not so much authentication, but more uh, authorization. Because in the database, we had that uh, table here with uh, all the values about a MAC address. So to do that, we uh, create an other authentication source uh, and that other authentication source uh, will be the PSQL uh, device uh, where we have the uh, same values here for the database and to log in Postgres and uh, basically the password type doesn't ma matter because we are not uh, really authenticating. We're just fetching uh, attributes uh, from that uh, from the table. And here under um, the query, um, this is slightly different. So here we select the MAC address, the name, the location, the label, the color, and the status. Those are the fields uh, that were in the database from the table CP device where the MAC address um, equals. Then connection client MAC address, uh, no delimiter. So again, we uh, can probably uh, get that best from an access tracker if we have an authentication already uh, because this is the format that I want to have my uh, MAC address in. If I have my MAC address in my database, for example, here with these uh, dashes, uh, we'll take uh, this type um, of the MAC address. Um, if it is uh, in uh, uppercase, uh, we'll take this one. So. Um, if you have the MAC address in some format um, and the format is listed here somewhere on the page, just uh, copy the way that it's uh, that it's shown here. So um, we are using here this one, the no delimiter. Um, you can see that here, and um, these are the values um, how we can pull them uh, from the database, and we can, um, if we like, give it another name in uh, ClearPass. So, yeah, basically the same uh, authorization uh, more than uh, uh, authentication. And uh, we can add this one now in our service. So I have a Mac authentication uh, service here. And in that uh, service, uh, first thing I had to uh, turn on here is the authorization options. So if you don't have the authorization option, you can see um, the authorization tab here on the top uh, is not available and uh, the authentication is just uh, the endpoint database and here for the authorization uh, we will take the uh, PSQL device database here under the roles I have a simple role mapping so if the uh, PSQL database uh, device uh, table uh, the field status says that it is uh, production then we assign a production role and yeah, basically some uh, standard uh, authentication. I didn't really change this. So let's see how that works if we um, connect the device to the network. So we go to the access tracker. And um, yeah, here we have already our um, authentication. So what we can see is that the authorization is indeed the PSQL device. We can see that the production role was assigned so that looks already good. If we go to the input here under the authorization attributes, we can see um, here from the authorization PSQL device, uh, the color, the label, the location, and here on the device status production. That was what I uh, matched to uh, put that production role on this uh, specific uh, user. So we can see now, um, how we pulled information from an external Postgres uh, database into ClearPass. Um, and um, if you have this uh, running, and uh, I will post all the queries in the comments here under the video, so you can copy and paste, which makes it much easier to reproduce it in your own uh, environment. And uh, from there, uh, probably it's easy to uh, change to different uh, table formats or different colors, uh, columns uh, or different names. Um, so um, I hope this was uh, a very useful video for you to get you started with uh, SQL uh, connections from ClearPass. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, uh, 
please like it and subscribe to our channel. That will help us uh, a lot. And uh, hope to see you back in another video. Thanks again for watching.